Portugal, unprecedented forest fires last month raged for days, killing more than 60 people. In California, over 8,000 people were forced from their homes in recent weeks. It was coming down, it was, it was wild. It was, you know, we had to get the hell out of here. Holy fuck, feel how hot that is? Now in BC, green mountainside charred. Police came back and they said, uh, aren't you guys going? You gotta go now. Devastation and displacement. It took our village away. What we seem to be seeing is even more severe fire seasons more frequently and perhaps more severe or more intense than we see in the past. Wildfire scientist Mike Flanagan says the severity of fire seasons globally can be linked to climate change. But to grasp that link, he says we first need to understand how these fires start. It takes three ingredients. The first ingredient is the fuel, the stuff that burns, the trees, the shrubs, the grass. Second, you need an ignition agent and people and lightning are the two common ignition agents. Third is hot, dry, windy weather. Generally, we talk about a 30-30-30 rule when we talk about explosive fire conditions, and that means uh, temperatures above 30 degrees, humidity less than 30%, and winds greater than 30 kilometers per hour. Well, Johanna Wagstaff joins us uh, one more time. You're CBC meteorologist CBC Johanna CBC Wagstaff has been following wildfire seasons in Canada degrees, for years. Fires are definitely getting uh, more intense, and they're becoming more frequent and just larger in size. Tonight, residents are being told to prepare for the worst. Hundreds of fires burned through the Northwest Territories in 2014. This is about the people of Saskatchewan and that's why we're here. In 2015, wildfires got so bad in Saskatchewan, the army was called in. And in Alberta. So we lost everything now. The 2016 Fort McMurray fires were the most destructive in Canadian history. The people here are, are, are devastated. Everyone's devastated. The community is going to be devastated. Wagstaff says all of these cases, including BC, can be connected to a warming climate. Most of the major uh, fire events we've seen, uh, Northwest Territory, Saskatchewan, Fort McMurray, uh, even in places like Portugal, uh, it's often preceded by a big heat wave and normally the jet stream sort of helps carry weather patterns along so they don't stay in place for more than a couple of days. But a warming climate is actually leading to these jet streams uh, getting locked in place for days or weeks on end and that's the, often the case for big fire situations, hot and dry for weeks on end. Another factor fueling recent wildfire seasons may be winters that are wetter than usual. Something that might sound counterintuitive, but that can lead to a lot of uh, growth of fuels to burn. So this year we saw a lot of tall grass growing and that has now all dried out in the past two heat waves and that's all extra fuel to burn. And these sort of it, it shifts and extremes when it comes to weather patterns will become uh, more frequent with climate change. With climate change, we expect longer fire seasons. Mike Flanagan says climate change helps explain why Alberta had to start its fire season early in March instead of April. And as the climate warms, we're seeing more lightning activity and the more lightning activity, the more fires you get. And most of our climate models for the future suggest we'll get warming, but not much increase in precipitation. So the fuels will be drier, so it's easier for fires to start and spread. So what can Canadians expect going forward? We have to keep in mind is that fire is a natural part of our Canadian forest. People live, work, play in the forest, and you get this intersection between fire and people with disastrous results at times. We are going to see longer fire seasons, larger fires, more intense fires, uh, but in all of the modeling, uh, when, it, when we look at climate change in the future, there are different scenarios. So even though our next sort of three decades are locked in based on the emissions that we've already put into the atmosphere, uh, beyond 2050, we can make a lot of changes. And I, I think in combination with how we manage fires, uh, that can have a, a big impact on how bad our seasons are in the future.